Usually, I'm making dresses for commissions, which is something I love very much and I'm extremely grateful for. Strangers trust me with an important part of their lives, their insecurities and wishes, and I get to be a part of it, making a wedding dress for example. But something I noticed over time is how much I enjoy seeing people I love, friends or family, wearing something I made. It feels so special to share this part of my life with them and see them feeling beautiful in something I made. So, let's create a dress for my mom. A person that supported me throughout my life and has a huge part in making it possible that I am where I am now. Designing a dress for someone I know so well was actually very easy. I knew from everything she said about my other dresses what she liked or wouldn't like to wear and I know her well enough to know what she would like to highlight and what she wouldn't. So this is what I came up with. The structural part of the dress will be a corset with a subtle sweetheart neckline. Over this I'll drape a dress that is very fitted at the top with a nice flowy skirt at the bottom. I add big sleeves that are slightly off shoulder. Finally I want to add some beads and similar colors to the top of the sleeves and the neckline. Everything is kept in brown and bronze tones. I already got my base pattern, the mock-up and the fabric for the corset. The base pattern is a simple corset pattern I once drafted and changed to fit the measurements my mom sent me. The mock-up is one I already sent my mom, which she then tried on, pinned smaller at some places and cut into for some room at others. First, I'll prepare the fabric for later. With every new fabric, I'll first lay it out completely and give it a good press. With this kind of fabric, I'll steam it a lot as well. While ironing, I'll check the fabric for small mistakes in the weaves or stains. When I find something I don't want to have on my pattern pieces, I mark it with some paper so I don't miss it when I'm drying the pattern on. After ironing and checking everything, I roll the fabric and put it away for later. To finalize the pattern, I first iron the paper pattern to get it flat again. This makes drawing on the changes much easier. Then I'll take the mock-up my mom sent back with the alterations and measure them. With my clients I don't usually get the mock-ups back, but since we only had time for one mock-up, this was a nice change. Luckily there are only a few small things I had to change, so I could easily draw them to the pattern without changing too much. First I draw these changes with pencil onto the pattern and when I think everything works together I draw over it with a colored pen. Then I add the day from when I made the changes to the pattern. This way usually when I make more than one adjustment I know exactly when I made which changes and can trace them back if necessary. Only when the pattern fits, I'll trace each individual piece onto another paper and cut it out there. 
I don't cut the initial pattern I made because this way it is easier to reuse it afterwards and make more changes or something completely new from it. On the new trace pieces I'll mark the grain line and the pattern number and then I'll cut everything. Then I'll get the previous prepared fabric to draw the pattern onto it. I prefer to draw every piece individually because I like to have all the sewing lines drawn onto them. Even when it takes longer this way, it saves a lot of potential trouble while sewing. I let a seam allowance of 1 cm all around and then cut out all the pieces. For sewing, I prepared the individual pieces. Some of them got additional boning to support the bust and I like to add it before sewing the pieces together. For this, I marked the places where the boning will be added and cut out some twill tape in the right length. After this, I can then sew the twill tape onto the pieces. First, I'll sew right in the middle of the tape while making sure it lays right on top of the marking. Then I'll sew down both sides of the tape. Before I make sure there will be enough space for my boning. The channels shouldn't be too tight, but also not too loose in order to give the right support. After sewing, I'll press each panel and then they are ready for the boning. Before adding the boning, I'll make sure to sand down the edges so that there aren't any sharp corners that could destroy the twill tape. To fit the dress later, I add some of the outer fabric to the back panels that gets the eyelets added. With the panels ready, I can then sew them together. I'll always sew two pieces onto each other and then create a boning channel with the seam allowance. I'll do this by cutting one seam allowance smaller and then folding the other one over it. This will then be sewn down. I only do this kind of boning channels when the pieces I sew together are more or less straight because otherwise the seam allowance needs to be clipped for smooth seams and boning channels wouldn't be possible this way. When adding the boning I'll make sure to cut them the exact right length because with the boning too long it gives a wonky neckline. After adding the boning I'll make sure to close the channels on both sides to secure everything. Finally, I'll add the label to the inside of the corset, as well as some twill tape to distribute the pull at the waist evenly. With some binding at the top and bottom, the corset is ready for its dress.
Next up I made the sleeves, so when draping the dress later I know how everything will look together. To know how wide the sleeves must be, I measured it out on the mannequin first. Then I used an old sleeve pattern I knew had the right proportions, so I laid it onto some cotton fabric. Here I traced it and added a seam allowance of 1 cm. I cut the whole piece out and traced it onto the fabric once more for the other sleeve. After that, I take the outside fabric, lay the previous cut pieces on top of it and pin them together. After loosely cutting around each piece, I'll baste them together on the sewing machine with a white stitch, making sure to stay in the seam allowance. I'll do this so that the sleeve will hold up its shape better when it's finished. Since the sleeves are off shoulder, but I want to add some beads a bit higher, I'll add something like a sleeve cap from Till. These are made by pinning the sleeves loosely to the arm of the mannequin and then mark the tool with pins. After that, I cut around the pins to get the right shape. Since the front and back look so similar, I mark which side is which so I don't get confused later. Then I trace this piece once more onto two for the other sleeve. To give them a bit more strength, I add some interfacing that I cut into small stripes to the edges. Before I can add the two parts to the sleeves, I have to gather the top and bottom of the sleeve. I link another video here where I explain how I do this kind of gathers. Then I add everything together and the sleeves are ready. Then it's finally time for the dress. I cut out long enough pieces of the fabric to cover the length and width I need to pin it onto the mannequin. To get the waist part as small as possible I first take in the center front. For this I fold the fabric in half and mark as much as I have to take in at the waist. After carefully pinning everything from top to bottom, I can then sew along the pins. Then I can cut the seam allowance and iron it open. With the front prepared, I have to do this again for the back. This works the same way, but with an additional invisible zipper in the center back. With both pieces prepared, I can finally pin them onto the mannequin. I made sure to pin everything as smooth as possible. It was a challenge for me to drape it on the mannequin without a proper pattern, but it was a nice change. Now that everything is pinned correctly at the side and top, I mark the side seams on all parts using the boning on the sides of the corset. Then I can sew the sides together like the center front and back. Add the neckline to the corset and add the sleeves to the dress by hand. And then it was finally time to add the beads. I started out sewing them on while the dress was still on the mannequin to get a better idea where I wanted the beads to go. After I had marked out the area where to add them, I laid the dress onto the table and added the rest of the beads. Thank you. 
I added most of them right where the neckline transitioned into the sleeve and let them slowly fade out to the front, down the side of the dress as well as on the sleeves and onto the tulle part. After adding the final bead, the dress was finally ready. So, here is the final dress. I love this different approach on the pattern making and I'm really happy with the result. And I especially like the beads as a small extra touch. I think it suits my mom really well, complimenting her best features and highlighting them. And the best sign for how she felt about it was definitely the smile and the instant change in posture when she put the dress on. This was worth all the work and is definitely a reason I make dresses. I hope that everyone who gets to wear a dress made by me feels this way, even if I can't see it with most of them.